Fala galera, bem-vindos a mais um vídeo hoje aqui do canal Já deixa aquele joinha porque demorou muito tempo para colocar a legenda em mais de uma hora de vídeo com o Andy Morgan Então essa daqui seria a segunda parte, tá? Onde a gente vai falar um pouquinho sobre coaching, né? Como que ele lida com os atletas dele é Um pouquinho também sobre dieta E um pouco sobre o livro dele, beleza? Então espero que vocês gostem Uma informação muito inédita aqui no canal, tá? E o livro dele, como sempre, tá na descrição do meu vídeo Queria lembrar também que eu comecei um blog agora O meu site é, onde eu estou escrevendo artigos e ontem publiquei meu primeiro artigo Que seria é, qual é o melhor treino para hipertrofia é, Fiquei muito orgulhoso, espero que vocês gostem Deixa seu comentário lá, tamo junto e curtem o vídeo aí Use o cupom de desconto CAIO10 para 10% de desconto em toda a loja Uh, I just want to ask you about dieting and what is your opinion opinion on flexible dieting and tying into that uh, if you think that nutrient timing matters? Wow, two big uh, topics there. Um, <laughs> okay, first, uh, flexible dieting. Um, flexible dieting to me, to us, is not um, if it fits your macros, then anything is okay it's a diet of um, inclusion you want to um, to keep it simple um, you want to have a fist of fruit and a fist of veggies with every meal um, let's say no let me adjust that If you're eating a thousand calories, you want to have a fist of fruit, a fist of veggies. If you're eating two thousand, you want to have two fists of fruit, two fists of veggies. Three thousand, three and three. Right? Um, you want to eat from a not good variety of um, food sources, so that you don't risk getting any nutrient deficiencies. Um, you want to make sure that your protein intake is met. Um, then you want to ensure that your um, carbohydrate and your fat intake is met, again, from a variety of sources. Foods that you know, I don't want to say healthy here, but try not to shop from stuff that is, comes in packets. Shop from outside of the supermarket where everything is in fridges, the fresh stuff, you know, yeah. stuff that's been grown. Um, Then, once you have covered all of your bases, then you can put in some chocolate or cake or pizza, right? Mm -hmm. But make sure that you're hitting those bases first. This, to me, is if it fits your macros. It is not, oh, these are my macros, so how can I have the craziest food combinations, right? So, so this means I can eat three chocolate bars and five protein shakes and I don't know four peanut uh, butter cups mm. right right yeah <laughs> yeah this is not okay <laughs> technically you've hit your macros well, okay well mm. done right yeah but just don't be stupid there's a lot of kids out there that are being a little bit naive with this I think that I think that you really learn how to do flexible dieting the right way when you're in a caloric deficit because then you prioritize the foods that make you feel fuller and those yes, are fibers good. and like veggies and protein uh, you know as well as foods that have nutrients that are gonna make you just your your body and all your 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 body functions that have to happen just work as well and you just don't feel as like lethargic and just uh don't feel like crap all the time because i mean if you're just yeah. having uh empty carbs you know okay that might give you some energy in the gym but that might give you a cold every week too you know like i don't know like you want the, those nutrients you know you want those fibers and just feel full feel good uh not feel like crap and just because I, I remember the time when I was prepping and it was my birthday, right? Uh, mm. So on your birthday, you're like, 
oh, come on, I gotta, I gotta eat something. So I still did not win outside my macros. Like I still hit my macros. Some people say, oh, that gave me 500 calories or stuff. But I had a pop tart. I'm like, I'm gonna eat this pop tart because I really want it, you know. Um, and you know, I just regret it. I was like, I'd rather have like, you know, just oats instead of that because I would just feel so much better and fuller and not as hungry. Uh, so that's when you really learn uh, the principles of flexible dieting, I think. But then what I would say to you in that situation is it's a special occasion. Mm -hmm. It's your birthday. If you want to have the pop-tart, the pop honestly, mm -hmm. eat the pop-tart. Don't feel guilty about it. Okay, mm -hmm. you might be a little bit hungrier a bit later on, mm -hmm. but it's important to not hammer ourselves too hard. You no, know, I agree. With that's you. it's it's all about adherence. This is the base layer on the pyramid of importance. Mm -hmm. Can you keep doing what you are doing? Mm -hmm. If you cannot keep doing the diet and the training plan you have set up, mm -hmm. forget it. Mm -hmm. You have to do what you can live with. Yeah, I I totally I totally agree with you. Actually, uh, that was my last contest prep. Yeah, I did very well because I was very focused and le like like I just told you uh, that my primary goal that year was to get my natural pro card, right? Um, and I would do anything. I it t it took me to get that. So I got the leanest I've ever got and I don't even know if I can compete with that guy again you know because uh, after that and after doing some thinking and just maturing as a person I see that um, getting to that level of body fat going to all of that going through all of that it's not really something I think I would like to do again uh, just because I know how I am how I interact with friends and family uh, how it affects my concentration my studies and honestly at the end of the day it's for a piece of, it's for a trophy, you know. Uh, I'm not gonna get a million dollar uh, sponsorship, you know. I'm not gonna be able to retire and live off uh, my title, you know. And it's something I love to do. I don't like when just what you love to do, like bodybuilding becomes a burden just because it, you feel like it's your job to go into the gym, give your best because you need that pro card. Um, and talking nowadays, you know, um, Natural bodybuilding doesn't have that much visibility, but also, there, unfortunately, there are guys that are not natural on stage. I'm not saying that 50% are, but like, I, I really admire the natural federations, and that's another subject, you know, like, but some of them are just like, it's not even their fault. It's just because you, a polygraph and a urine, 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 ah, urine, analysis. urine lab analysis. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, those are things that people know how to, you know, how to go around those things. So, I mean, I'm not saying people do it all the time, but also, uh, and I'm not going to, you know, be the guy that complains about it. Oh, the guy was, you know, no, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to go in. But sometimes I don't think it's really worth it. You know, like after spending some time just in off season, enjoying some food, enjoying my family, enjoying those social moments, I saw how much I missed when I was just, prepping for six straight months you yeah. know so you, like you have to train for you yeah right and it yeah. comes down to your priorities yeah so i have many clients that are in better condition than me mm -hmm. and that's because they're more committed than me mm -hmm. it means more to them but for me right now my priorities it means more to me to be able to pick up a bag and go travel yeah yeah and spend time exploring and getting in my own mind I'm I'm happy with how I look. I'm happy with who I am. Exactly. Um, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's all that matters. I think you need to be happy where you are. You know. Uh, yeah. You, like right now, I'm maintaining, like you said, we are comfortable maintaining 10, 11 percent body fat. I'm doing that. Uh, I'm enjoying my training. Uh, you know, I'm not like it's not a burden. I'm enjoying food. I'm being able to go out with friends and stuff, and that's what. You know, life is just too short for you to be just lonely and trying to be the shredded, shredded like the most shredded guy on earth, you know? It is. And, and just to be clear, you're talking about the difference between um, being like, whoa, look at that guy. He's pretty lean mm -hmm. on the beach, i.e. shredded lean, 
what I'd call it, like that 8 to 11% range mm-hmm. that a lot of people can get to. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Yeah. However, what, when you're talking about suffering, and I'm not sure I want to do that again, you're talking about like the 4 to 5% yes. that you need to be on stage. Because there is a, for those that don't know, mm-hmm. there is a world of difference between how you feel and function at that 8 to 11% range yeah. and that 4 to 5% where your body thinks you're dying yeah, <laughs> and, then, and it doesn't want to yeah. keep you at that level. Yeah, that's um, exactly right. I mean, you're going against the nature, you know, you're putting your body in starvation mode. But like you said, we can be maintain a good life being the shredded guy in the beach. You know, you can be that guy where people, you know, like I always tell my followers, you know, girls, like... They're gonna like if you're ten percent body fat, you just have a nice physique, like an overall, like just a guy that you know looks like he works out. They think that's sexy. Now, a guy that's super, super, super peeled, sometimes four percent body fat, or sometimes a guy with a bunch of roids. Most of the girls I know, at least, they think that's kind of disgusting. So you know, just and you know, if you if if you're that shredded and your libido doesn't work, you don't have the sasha in your body, you know. It's not going to work out. but And the other thing that, I mean, it took me a long time to figure this out, but being a, happy with who you are means that you'll be a confident person, means that when you speak to people, then that confidence will radiate, and that is more attractive, and that is going to make more of a difference to women than mm-hmm. being 5% body fat leaner than you are right now. Yeah. Right. Are you an asshole? Because if you are, correct that about yourself first. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Treat people right. That's going to make way more difference. If if you think that getting lean is going to get you women, you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. I, it's good for clearing that up because a lot of people unfortunately think like that these days. Um, so now I just want to ask one one question about uh, your coaching. And then just talk a little bit about your book and we can wrap up. Um, so I just want to ask, just how many clients do you work with at a time? You know, and just tying up to that, um, what is what is the biggest lesson you've learned from being an online coach? If that's from a specific client or just working with a general, like your general public, uh, what's the biggest lesson maybe you've learned about yourself or about uh, online coaching or anything like it? Okay, let, let me come back to that second question. Okay. So I'll start with the first. Um, I work with a lot, lot less, uh, a lot fewer people than I used to. I used to only work with people for 12 weeks. Okay. But I realized that while that was a good commitment tool for people, it wasn't good for my education. So I want to keep people progressing. I want to tweak their training, tweak their diets for the long term so I can follow their progression through a cut, then a bulk, then a cut again. It's really rewarding for me as a coach. So I change things up, and now I work for people for much longer periods. Um, I also increased my prices as well just last year. Um, So now I work with between 30 and 40 people. I keep it in that range. I could work with... The way that I have things set up, I could work with double easily, um, but I don't want to. I want to get to my email in a comfortable, non-rushed mindset so that I can really put time in and think about it and, and do good work. And this isn't the, the coaching that I was doing before had bad reviews people loved it but i just for me i wanted to do better i'm always Mm -hmm. looking to do better Mm -hmm. um so i keep it purposefully at low numbers um i think something like one in 20 people between one one in ten or one in twenty people that actually apply for coaching will become a client. Okay. Which sounds crazy, but um, <laughs> um, a lot of people at the time kind of their 
they're not very serious. Mm -hmm. So they don't fill out the application form that I give them, which is detailed. Okay. Um, so if you want my time, give me your time first. Yeah. Um, so that immediately rules out half. And then from there, sometimes the goals that they have and what I think I can do for them don't align. Sometimes I'm not the right coach for them. So I'll tell them, hey, I'm not, I'm not the right guy for you. I think this guy is. Or I think you need to do this right now. And you don't need to hire me for that. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter because I've got my quota. I'm not chasing like a load more money. Yeah. I'm perfectly happy where I am. I own more than enough. Um, and I like to have that good work-life balance in there. You know, um, I feel blessed that I can do what I love, earn a good living, and have location freedom. Blessed. Because if I was living 100 years ago, I wouldn't have anything like the life that we have the opportunity to have now. Mm -hmm. Right? My granddad, he worked in a coal mine. His dad worked in a coal mine. Um, <laughs> it's it's not even comparable, right? Yeah. If we'd been born the generations between, we'd have been at a war somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I uh, I feel blessed to do what I do. Um, sorry for the ramble. No, um, <laughs> the, yeah. the, so, so, sorry the uh, oh, the the second question. Uh, the, the second question is like, what is the biggest lesson you've learned uh, from being an online coach? Um, I think um, I think it's important to set boundaries. Um, and be very clear on what the what you do and what what I do and what I don't do with my clients before they become clients. Um, and I think it's essential to be consistent so that people have a good experience. So I will email people once a day and I will not email people on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And when they are applying for coaching, I email them once a day. I don't respond on the weekends. When they're a customer, I email once a day. I don't respond on the weekends. I'm consistent with that. People that are looking for a text message type chat to get access to me every day, any time of the day or every day, well, they don't, they don't um, try and work with me because in the initial contact period, they realize that that's not how I work. Mm -hmm. So setting up those expectations from the start, I think is essential. And once you have those standards, not breaking those standards. So if I've said that I'm not going to take on anybody under 20 years old, I do not take on anyone under 20 years old. If I've said that if you email me from your smartphone and you are applying for coaching, I will not work with you. There are no second chances. That's a rule that's written on the coaching page. It's written in my first email to you, and it's written in the application form. You're going to sit down at a computer, and you're going to write. And you're going to think about what you're writing. You're going to read the emails carefully. And I will respect your time and do the same. So you need to respect my time. So if you have a rule, don't break that rule. You know? Because mm -hmm. otherwise, things become personal. Mm -hmm. And when when you start making personal individual decisions, that's when it becomes draining. But if you set up things in uh, systems in place and rules that you have, then nothing becomes personal. That's just how it is. And also, I think it's essential to have this strict reputation as a coach because we work online. I am just a guy at the end of a keyboard somewhere else in the world, in Japan. Mm -hmm. Why, why should they trust me? Yeah. The only reason they trust me is because they like my writing. I come across as an honest person. Um, I come across as a, someone who cares and is knowledgeable. Um, that's all I have. 
we can't if we start compromising on our principles we mess that up and then it's a very quick fall to going back to a nine to five job that we're not passionate about that we and <laughs> I can't think of anything worse all right because I love it you know so nice like the answer um now for the final final questions here uh just let us talk about a little bit about your book um just just two basic questions uh i i want to ask you why did you feel the need to write your book um and how do you think your book is different from other books out there that talk about the same subject uh that is cutting and dieting Yeah, so my answer actually is the same for both questions. I think it was needed. There aren't really any books out there that talk about the adjustment, the adjustments that you need to make. There aren't books out there that talk about how to self-coach. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really anal in, for detail, and um, I've put down how I coach people, the system that I use to coach people, so yeah. that people can coach themselves keep themselves objective and stop themselves from from messing up their hard work. Um, that's why I wrote the book. Because people would come to me and they would be in the same problems again and again and again. But I can only work with a small number of people. Now, I don't want to work with everyone that applies to me. And honestly, most people can't afford to pay Even if I, um, even if I, even if I want to work with them and, and everything goes really smoothly, mm -hmm. a lot of people can't afford to pay. And um, so I wanted to offer something that pretty much anybody can afford if they want it. Okay. And um, so that's why I built the resource. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 And, and, and it's funny, um, so this, this book, I, I wrote it as, as, uh, as a manual for guys who coach people to help mm -hmm. them coach, but also so that people can self-coach. Yeah. What I didn't realize is that when I took on my second employee for Japan, uh, Naoto, Naoto Motashi, he's great, um, he, uh, when we were training him up on how we would... So over the next six months now, we're training him up mm -hmm. before he works with clients, mm -hmm. um, which is essential to do a good job, right? Yeah. But he already knew really well how I worked because he had already read my book. And mm -hmm. that was really cool to see because it yeah. showed me that, ah, I did a good job with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I didn't, there wasn't a lot more. Mm -hmm. to, well, there's a lot more to explain, but... At the same time, like he's already there, yeah. you know. Yeah, um, that's awesome. So that was that was a, a nice, um, how do we say, a side effect yeah. of uh, writing that. I'm glad I did, you know. Yeah, honestly, yeah, reading that, you, you didn't leave much out, like pretty much anything out, you know, in that book. Like you go every single detail of that of scenarios it could happen to a client, you know, and how to deal with that, and what should we do, suggestions, and then you have the charts. Uh, like, did you do this? Yes or no? Then, then you should do this. And and I think that that's 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 so helpful for a lot of people because they're so lost. And and for us, you know, for people that know a little bit about nutrition or know a little bit about training, it might seem something so like um, so simple, you know. But for them, some people they need that guidance. They need you to take your hands and be like, hey, now we're gonna go here. I'm gonna do this. Okay. Um, And then you're just gonna feel a little bit more comfortable knowing that, you know, someone uh, explained to them how to do it and told them to do exactly that thing. Uh, and and yeah, I think that it's a easy easy to, easy to read, you know, easy to understand. There's no like very uh, technical jargon there. So uh, honestly, like I like writing. I wrote a book about flexible dining in Portuguese. And reading yours and reading Eric Helms' books, it just it just kind of inspires me to like write more. You know, like I, I know I'm I might not have 
own the knowledge there yet but still it just it excites me you know to like i want to do this i want to help people like they're helping people you know in my own way so that's pretty cool too thank you um i appreciate that uh we appreciate that um but it means a lot that um japan and brazil i'm an english guy i live in <laughs> japan which is yeah. the other side of the world brazil is literally the other side of the world yeah um and i have a book in brazil this it's crazy it is it's crazy yeah i'm helping people in brazil you um, have people it's crazy in brazil. you are it's crazy yeah i'm really lucky man i'm really lucky i mean honestly so, uh i made a video uh talking about your book and in that video i give six tips that I got from your book, specifically from your book about cutting. Uh, and the book had, and the video already had 90,000 views. Really? Yeah. really? So, so if you think about it, there's 90,000 people that watched that video and all the information pretty much they got was essentially taken out of your book, you know? So, yeah, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's incredible. Thank yeah. you. So the, there's all those people. But that's the thing, right? If people... Okay, so if they buy my book, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Right? I've, but a lot of people aren't going to buy the book. And that's okay as well. Because mm -hmm. they've been helped by those tips. Mm -hmm. You know, there are, no, there are no losers here. As long as we get the information out to enough people, mm -hmm. we will help way more people than the number of people that actually buy yeah and that's incredible because wherever you go in brazil someone in whatever city you go to wants to buy you a beer mm -hmm. right yeah they want to sit down and buy you a beer in yeah. a bar they're like thank you very much for your work yeah. you know yeah and i i i get that um wherever i go as well yeah and uh, i think and that you know everybody that buy your book uh they're gonna use the knowledge that they learn to help other people in the way they can. So, yeah, and and honestly, it's for as crazy as it sounds, you know, for all the information that's out there, you know, there's still things that you can do to help people, you know, like there's so many ways, like your book is, people can look at it and be like, it's a book about cutting, hell, I can just Google cutting on you Google and, and just know how to do it. But it's really not that easy, you know, it's, the information is out there, but a lot of wrong information is out there, you know, and a lot, and, and a lot of confusing information is out there too. So, that's very cool, and uh, also your book is, uh, as I read and as I know you, there is very um, is more for like natural athletes, you know, people that like you said, maybe they're thirty years old, you know, they've accomplished themselves, their lives, you know, their goals financially, economically, you know, just they have a good life, they have a good job, but they don't have the physique they want. They now want to get into drugs and stuff to do that. So they learn, they learn their body, they learn their biochemistry to know how to do that, to know how to transform their physique naturally. And that I think is really cool. So I appreciate your time so much. I know I've held you here for like like a uh, while. Uh, Kyle, I feel that we could chat all day. Thank you for your time. No, and thank you. And to anybody who's still listening to this video, uh, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it. I think they all appreciate your time. Uh, that's so cool of you, and I like. I don't know. I I I feel like I'm a busy guy, so I feel like you, even like worse, even more busy than I am. So thank you very much. You're in Japan right now. It's in like it's eight it's eight p.m. right here. It's probably like nine a.m. right there. Japan. Right, let's, let's go see Japan. Show us Japan. <laughs> okay, hang on. So everybody lives in high rises here. So, uh, ah, this, this is Japan. Wow. <laughs> is that Tokyo or what? That's, that's the tallest building in, I think in Japan. Uh, no, this is okay. Osaka. Okay. Um, that's the big like, city. Uh, it's like 300 meters tall, I think that one. Um, mm. but yeah, Tokyo is much bigger. So I live right in the center. Gotcha. 
All right. Okay, so this is the video. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching it. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you just enjoyed it or you watched it to here. And comment uh, on the comment section what you thought about it, what you thought about uh, Andy. And if you have any questions for him, maybe I'll email him or whatever that is. Okay, that's it. I will see you in the next video. Mm-hmm. <laughs>